This video slideshow introduces the upcoming Pave the Way Capital Campaign. Pave the Way joins five past major capital projects that supported our church, allowing it to ensure a vibrant and growing worship community. My name is Doug Freeman. I was very pleased when I was asked to be the narrator for this presentation. I was baptized in the original sanctuary in October of 1960. For the past 64 years, I've witnessed the incredible growth of the Coltsneck Reformed Church. Growth that was nurtured by a generous and forward-looking congregation. In my lifetime, houses were bought and sold, land was acquired, and buildings were constructed. Buildings that continue to serve the mission of the church. It's time once again to look forward as we pave the way for future growth for our ministry. Each past project provided needed capital improvements as identified by forward-thinking parishioners. This new campaign is no different in its basic goal, which is to ready and maintain our buildings and grounds for the future in a way that allows us to remain financially sound. What follows is a brief look at past major capital projects, identifying their achievements, dates and costs, followed by a summary overview of the current Pave the Way campaign. This look back provides some historical context for what lies before us. The original church building was constructed in 1856 when Route 537 was a dirt road and parishioners arrived for worship on horseback. It replaced the use of homes and barn-like structures that had served as locations for the church's gatherings. What is not visible in this photo is a stable in the back where the horses were kept while the owners were in worship. The exact cost of the building is lost to history, but it is estimated a 40 by 60, 4,800 square foot, two-story building would cost about $18,000 to build it at the time. That's not including the land. Fortunately, it is reported that the land for the sanctuary was donated by the neighboring Haight and Taylor families. The cost of this building in today's dollars is about $650,000. There is no doubt this construction project was quite a fiscal challenge for the farming community. Fortunately for today's congregation, they persevered even though their first attempt failed. The church thrived. After 110 years, it became evident that space was needed for classrooms, ministers' offices, and a large room where meals could be prepared and served. A two-story brick building known as the Education Building at the time, now the Community Center, was built on the existing land behind the sanctuary. The cost of $124,000 at that time equates to $1.2 million today. The value the building has provided over the past 58 years is evident. Lessons have been taught, meetings held, and fellowship has been created over coffee and countless meals that have been served. Such events as the Election Day Dinner have provided outreach to the community. Little imagination is required to see that the project enabled the church's growth and continues to be an invaluable asset to the community. The success of the church was driven by excellent preaching, an outstanding music program, multiple children's opportunities, and wide community involvement. The original sanctuary and education buildings supported these programs. However, over time, additional space in the sanctuary was needed to accommodate the growth in attendance. So, in 1984, 18 years after the construction of the education building, the original sanctuary seating space was increased from 160 to the present 288. A three-story annex was added to the back of the church. In addition to the added seating, the annex provided an enlarged stage area, three restrooms, a communion preparation area, two additional classrooms, and a choir rehearsal room. This expansion cost $500,000 at the time, which equates to $1.4 million in today's dollars. The expanded sanctuary has provided the core of the church worship space for the last 40 years. Eleven years after the sanctuary was expanded and driven by the continued success of Sunday worship and programs in the community center building, it was apparent that accessibility required modernization and needed to be addressed. This led to a two-story addition onto the north end of the community center, which, which included an elevator, an additional restroom, and two additional classrooms. The cost in 1995 
was $104,000, which is approximately $214,000 in today's dollars. For the last 29 years, the elevator has permitted access for all congregants and visitors during Sunday activities and weekend community programs. No doubt, it will continue to provide access for many years into the future. 16 years after completion of the elevator addition, church growth, the success of the early learning center housed in the community center, and continued community involvement presented new challenges. Additional classroom space was needed on Sunday mornings, and multiple large meeting spaces were needed to accommodate simultaneous events. Also, due to the addition of new staff positions to support the growing and active congregation, new office space was required. Basically, the church grew out of its available space. The cost of $1.7 million in today's dollars, the chamber's property and home adjacent to the east side of the sanctuary was purchased. The ministry center was constructed, replacing the chamber's home. Today, 13 years after construction of the ministry center, it is impossible to imagine the church operating without it. Likewise, the Paving the Way Capital Campaign acknowledges several current pressing needs and provides a path forward. Based on a recent engineering study, the existing 60-year-old upper parking lot is no longer viable. It has suffered with reoccurring multiple potholes and requires complete removal and reconstruction. Beyond that, new drainage, underground support, and new paint stripping are needed. Given the need for parking lot reconstruction, it's time to address the long-term problem of the grading of the entrance and exit driveways. The current slope prevents the entrance of buses and more importantly, fire trucks to the church campus. The county has indicated that the current location of two highway driveways presents a safety hazard as they are too close together and don't provide sufficient sight lines when exiting to Route 537. Just as importantly, Families and children leaving Sunday services must cross the East Driveway at the same time as vehicles are exiting to Route 537. This is another significant safety hazard. Slowing pass-through traffic on campus is another concern addressed by the new driveway configuration. A proposal to resolve these issues was presented to and approved by the Zoning Board of Adjustment of Colts Neck. The plan includes removing and reconstructing the parking lot removing the existing two Route 537 driveways and replacing them with grass and plantings. It will also create ingress and egress driveways at a roadway to the east of the Ministry Center. This plan is shown in the aerial view rendering. These urgent needs are motivating necessity for the parking lot and driveway portion of the capital campaign. A summary of the full scope of the campaign is shown on the next two slides. The $970,000 cost for removal and complete reconstruction of the existing upper parking lot and construction of the new Route 537 driveways, as shown on the previous slide, is the bulk of the total campaign goal of $1.6 million. This construction project will provide for emergency vehicle entry directly to the campus from Route 537. Currently, the grading of the two existing 537 driveways is such that fire trucks and large buses cannot enter for fear of getting stuck. Several incidents of stuck buses have occurred in the past. This condition adds critical seconds to a fire response. Trucks from Firehouse 1 must pass by the church on Route 537 eastbound, make a left turn onto New Street, then a left turn onto Village Lane, and finally enter the church campus via the Village Lane driveway. The relocation of the existing 537 driveways will completely eliminate car traffic between the sanctuary and the ministry center, making it much safer for worshipers leaving the sanctuary and crossing to the ministry center. The new driveway location will improve the sight lines for oncoming traffic on Route 537, thus making exiting the church campus much safer. Capital Campaign Expense Fund will be created to address campus elements which require regular maintenance and or complete replacement as forecasted by professional evaluations. This is in contrast to the current practice of funding such projects as they arise. 
from the church's annual budget surplus if available. Having a separate, forward-looking capital expense fund will ensure the church has appropriate funds when capital needs arise. The capital fund will be evaluated annually and maintained by addition from the annual church budget as needed. Paying off the church's last remaining debt obligation of $175,000 will serve to increase the funds available for the church's monthly operation and the church's benevolences by eliminating the associated principal and interest payments. Several current pressing needs will be addressed. Examples are much needed sanctuary exterior clapboard repair, including priming and painting. Replacement of the 60-year-old partially working stove and ventilation hood in the community center with a commercial stove and vent hood and funding various youth and congregational transportation needs. The four capital campaign items identified above and in the previous slide comprise the total campaign goal of $1,600,000. Members of the committee leading the Pave the Way campaign are shown on the next slide. Please be on the lookout for more details for the Pave the Way campaign. The committee will be providing a host of written materials posted on the church website and offering in-person information sessions. And of course, feel free to ask any member of the committee for additional campaign information. In closing this introduction, I quote the words used by Scott Brown delivered at the conclusion of his sermon at the 150th anniversary worship service on April 23rd, 2006. As God has been faithful in the past, let us confidently, intentionally, and gratefully step forward, faith filled into the future, for we do not do so alone. Surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, we go forward in the grace, power, and presence of the risen Lord, Jesus Christ words that inspire and guide us to this very day. Amen.